Hi, I'm Jackie. And I'm Seth. And this is Never TMI. Where we talk about real things. And nothing is ever off limit. <laughs> well, here we are. Yes, here we are. We are so thankful just to be filming another episode. Yeah. And I hope you all have enjoyed it as much as we have. Mm-hmm. Um, we're really having a lot of fun doing this. So today we are bringing a topic to you that is a little different, yeah. kind of want to change it up a little bit um and that is going to be what is it like to be the daughter of a famous person yes which would be me um <laughs> for anyone who doesn't know um Seth's gonna kind of go through who he is just I'm sure a ton of you guys don't know at least the majority of my community on Instagram at least is women. Like I think it's like 99% women. Um, and so, yeah, he's, he's kind of going to go over who he is, but uh, I'm excited. I think it'll be really special just for, um, I don't know, just I'm a nosy person. So it's always interesting to hear like a different <laughs> perspective, on, a perspective on something that I've never like experienced before. But also it is definitely like a big part of me that I don't share too often about. And um, yeah, so I'm excited. Let's do it. Yeah. So we're going to kind of run this as like an interview style. Yeah. I'm going to ask Jackie some questions and it's kind of fun too, because it's like, I, I, don't remember actually specifically asking these questions to Jackie. So I think I kind of know the answers, but yeah, it'll, it'll be fun to hear her yeah. response as well. So uh, before I start, I do want to introduce um, my father-in-law, Jackie's dad. Oh. Um, and he has quite the credential list. So I'm going to, I'm going to read through some of these here. Uh, for those of you who don't know though, Um, Jackie is essentially the byproduct of a rock star mom (laughs) and a hall of fame dad. Her dad is Mike Singletary. And for those of you who don't know, he is, uh, famous for being a middle linebacker, especially for the Chicago bears when they won the Super Bowl in, um, 1985. But, um, you know, it's kind of you know, it's a relative thing, but you could say that Jackie kind of grew up living an unconventional life Mm -hmm. and we'll, we'll kind of get into that in a little bit, but she is, you know, one of seven kids, um, and the daughter of a eighties football superstar. So, um, Mike Singletary, he was a Baylor bear. So he, he went to Baylor, which is here in Texas. And some of his credentials there, he was a four-year letterman. He was a two-time Southwest Conference Player of the Year. He was a two-time Consensus All-American, two-time Davey O'Brien Memorial Trophy winner. Uh, He holds school records for single-season most tackles and total career tackles at Baylor. Um, In 1981, he was drafted to the Chicago Bears. He is a Super Bowl champion. He is a two-time NFL Defensive Player of the Year. He is the NFL Man of the Year in 1990. Seven-time first-team All-Pro, 10-time Pro Pro Bowl selection. He was nominated to the NFL 1980s All-Decade Team. He won the Bart Starr Award. Um, and those are just to name some of the most, the more, uh, notable accomplishments. Uh, for most of you though, you might know him from the 85 Super Bowl shuffle, or some of you might recognize him just by his crazy eyes. That's some of his more, <laughs> yeah. uh, notable <coughs> fun memories. Um, but after playing then he was elected to the college football hall of fame in 1995 then elected to the Pro Football Hall of Fame in 1998. Um, and at, at one point, he was even ranked in the top 100 greatest football players of all time. So afterwards, he went on to coach for several NFL teams, including Baltimore, Baltimore Ravens, San Francisco 49ers, Minnesota Vikings, and the LA Rams. 
Um, today, he's really known as just a wise man of God. He's a husband, a father, a grandfather, father-in-law, speaker, author, and now he's a CEO um, for a nonprofit organization trying to serve uh, underprivileged communities. So quite the resume there, um, and I'm yeah. sure you're so proud of that. Oh, just yeah. Getting- I mean, it's funny because I feel like I know, like, I don't know. Even when I think of like what he's known for, it's like I, I, he retired the year that I was born. So in my mind, I'm like, oh, you're famous for like coaching and all this kind of stuff. Or, mm. or I know, I know for his playing, but like, I don't know. It's, I literally had to watch him on YouTube, you know, just to know what people were talking about when they were like, right. oh, your dad. I was like, what did he do? You know, what, <laughs> what was he like? So, it's funny, but yes, I'm so proud. I, I mean, I'm more proud of any, um, or more proud than anything for who he is as a man and a father and a husband and all that kind of stuff. But yes, that's an insane list of accomplishments. Yeah. So, so to kick it off here, I guess my first question is, um, a man with such accolades, mm-hmm. you know, and that requires such dif- discipline, you know, football is a, is a game of grit and toughness. Yeah. You know, he he definitely exemplified that on and off the field. How was that growing up in a household, being a daughter to someone who is that intense, that yeah. regimented? and disciplined. And especially with, you know, you and six other siblings. Yeah. I think, well, it was crazy. I mean, and everyone knew it and thought so on the outside too. Like, Everyone went to school with. It was just like the most structured. Um, I mean, it was fun. It was amazing. I I mean, it felt like we were our own team, just seven <laughs> kids, two parents. And I think that's especially what my dad wanted. Um, and so, yeah, I, we it, it was definitely intense. Like we would walk downstairs. Everything was just, I mean, from the moment we could function using our hands and walk and stuff it was like great you're a part of the you know the the cleanup crew we're gonna learn how to wipe the kitchen I mean wipe the counters clean the kitchen unloaded the the dishwasher like we there was a lot of expectation what, what was your worst punishment <gasps> oh, I'll never forget it ever 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 anyone anytime someone is like like you personally though oh yeah Not oh, oh I family, got it but... trust me I got it um, so I, when I was 14, I took a car out and I picked up some friends. I don't, I can't even fathom how I was so bold. I was a bold child, <laughs> but I'm literally 14. Don't even have my permit. Okay. And I take our car. Oh my gosh. For as intense as like punishments were, I don't know why I even thought about doing this, but anyway, picked up some friends, friends, and, um, yeah, one of my best friends at the time found out and told my mom when my parents found out, first of all, I got a call on a cell phone that I probably like just had gotten back. Okay. My phone was always gone. We shared a phone with my siblings. Like I never had a phone, but for some reason, or maybe my sister was called and she told me whatever, either way, I was sick to my stomach because my mom was at john's baseball game my youngest brother and she found out and he i mean she was like come to john's baseball game and i had to run there first of all so i had to run to john's baseball game from home out of my bed run to so first of all i'm like she it's not like she gave me any information so it was like oh my gosh what what is happening i'm just in big trouble that's all i know my dad didn't even find out yet. So I'm running. And it was like, it, it was not close. It was close enough to like run, but it was miles. Like it, so I'm running. Okay. I get there. I'm bawling. Cause I knew I was like, something, something's wrong, whatever. And I was like, are you going to tell dad? I, like literally, obviously I, I don't think I ever asked my mom to not tell my dad anything because that was just their relationship. I knew better, but, um, Long story short, of course she tells him, like, what? Um, I had to, 
it was quite the punishment, but I had to g- hang out with my mom basically every single day, no matter what, when she woke up, I had to get up. If she was in the kitchen, I was in the kitchen. He basically was like, this is the woman you need to become and you're nowhere near that. So <laughs> you're going to hang out with her and do what she does. Go to the grocery store. You're coming with her jury duty, literally. And of course my mom gets jury duty. So I'm at jury duty <laughs> with my mom. Oh, wow. Um, I, Yes, my mom is just a wonderful saint and always got jury duty for it. Um, But I had to write, first it was 500 times, but I think my mom, praise the Lord, told my dad, like, it's impossible. She can't write this every single night. Um, And I still remember it to this day. It was, as of this day, June 6th, I am no longer the victim, but the victor. God has granted this no god has planted the seedness of greatness in me since the day i was born 500 times and then he reduced it to 100 and then i had to run five four hundreds you had to write day. that every night every single night for how long? i sat on my toilet in my bathroom and just wrote wrote wrote, wrote. um the whole summer oh, pretty wow. much whole summer and then yeah he again he reduced it to 100 and then i had to run five four hundreds a day and they were timed and then um I had to re- memorize three proverb verses and recite them to him every evening. Different verses. Like I had a day to memorize three. Worst punishment. That was one punishment. That was like one. Wow. And you know, it, it was it was a pretty big deal, but whoo. That never is forget intense. That. Yeah. <clears throat> Especially for three, two and a half to three months. Uh-huh. Wow. It's bad. It's bad. Okay. Um, let's change it up a little bit on the flip side Mm -hmm. like what are some of the perks yeah of being you know the daughter of someone who's famous and especially living in chicago Mm -hmm. you know he was so well known and loved by that city like can you share some stories with us just like yeah memories things that you know i'd say yeah for sure the the first thing that comes to mind is like everything was just so like (laughs) extra so deluxe it felt just really cool and I'll always say like I feel like my parents did an amazing job because everyone thought we were spoiled that's just the way that it was it Mm -hmm. it just came with like oh your dad is who he is so you guys must get everything you want you guys must be so spoiled all that kind of stuff but they really uh, we were absolutely not spoiled that's for sure we were blessed and very um fortunate but they I think that was kind of like a fear of theirs and they made sure Mm. um so we always knew like oh this feels really special but um just getting picked up in limos for the airport like getting to ride in private jets like I'll never forget that um doing like especially like ESPN weekend, they would have just a ton of just events. So Disney world, you're like going through all the lines, you're meeting the most incredible, um, what's the word impressive, like athletes and just people and, um, just getting to be a part of these really cool events that people just I don't know. You're like looking at everybody who's like so excited to be there and you're like, oh, I'm on the other side of this. This is crazy. Um, And then obviously like the football side of things like training camp, getting to go and just be with the players and eat with them and all that kind of stuff that always felt really special. And um, everything was just nice. You know, we got to go a lot more places than I'm sure most people would. Um, He did a lot of speaking engagements Um, in that in-between time before he started coaching. And so he would, you know, take us to Hawaii and um, there was never really like a limit on what we could eat or do or anything like that. And then, you know, if we were traveling and doing, um, and he was doing a speaking engagement and it was kind of like a super jam-packed weekend or something, there would be like one of his PR agents or something, you know, if my mom were to stay with him or whatever. And... Um, they would just take us to like the zoo or take us to wherever, wherever we wanted to go, whatever we wanted to do. And it just, um, it just felt really fun and getting to do that with my siblings and just having people who, you know, it wasn't like I was an only child. So, um, experiencing that with people and just, we would all just be so giddy and so excited. And so Mm -hmm. I would say that. And then 
other little things kind of like getting pulled over. I've been pulled over so many times in my life and I, my first (laughs) ticket that I ever got was when I got married (laughs) and I, I mean, anytime I got pulled over, it was like a joke. I, I vividly remember I would get pulled over. They would take my license be like, oh, do you know why I got pulled over? And I'm like, I don't know, speeding probably, I don't know, sorry, whatever. They'd go to the back, back to their car. It'd be like 10, 15 minutes. They'd come back and they'd be like, oh my gosh, you didn't tell me this was your dad, you know. Please tell him I said hi, you know, so-and-so said hello. I've been such a fan. You have a great day, you know, just watch your speed. (laughs) Never got a ticket, ever, ever, ever. Like never even got a warning because I got pulled over so dang often. I would have gotten, you know, multiple, but um. Just things like that, just like secondhand, you know, I didn't do anything special, you know, so it was just, just special, you know, those yeah. kind of things. Um, Kind of carrying that same thought over to now being married yeah. to a lowly chum. <laughs> what, like what are Get some of the here. adjustments you've had yeah. to make? And I think especially like financially, mm-hmm. like living, you know, luxury growing up in that yeah. space and i i do agree i think your parents did a great job yeah. of trying to but normalize. it's inevitable yeah. yeah but there's definitely some things you know like you're saying that you guys got to experience that are mm-hmm. special but now you know getting married kind of going out on your own yeah even before we met like what were what was that like mm-hmm. and again kind of like from a financial standpoint like yeah I mean, there were, it. it's like, no matter what, obviously my money mentality was a little skewed, you know? <laughs> so like, no, they did the absolute best they could do in, and, and, you know, I don't know. I, we have, we have a, a pretty good understanding, um, especially cause my dad's side of the family, um, was definitely just uh, would be considered like underprivileged um, just where they live and lifestyle and all that kind of stuff income. Um, and it's all unfortunately a part of a very massive sad system, but yeah. Oh yeah. Can you actually also share a little bit of kind of just where he came from and grew yeah. up, like his, his upbringing? Absolutely. So he, he has a ton of books and just, I'm sure speeches and all that kind of stuff just on, where he comes from, because it's absolute. That is one of the most incredible things to me mm-hmm. um, about him. He's the only one of his ten or nine siblings. He's one of ten kids who um, graduated with a degree. Um, so just the cards absolutely were stacked against him and his family. Just where they grew up, and they grew up in Houston, Sunnyside, um, and uh, if you've ever been to Sunnyside, Houston, it's definitely just run down. It's, um, like I said, underprivileged. So, um, he, I mean, my grandparents on his side are no longer with us, but his parents got divorced and, um, yeah, his mom, he was very, very close with his mom and she just did. I mean, they were like best, best friends, but, he, I mean, his love for football pretty much got him through. And I mm-hmm. think, you know, he'll say this and I don't want to butcher it, but, um, he basically told his mom, he's like, I, I just need you to cook me three meals. You know, I need you to cook me three meals and I will do the rest. You know, I will take care of it. And he did. And so he really set his mind on something like he, he at 12, set a goal of all these things and literally made every single one happen, which is mind blowing. Mm. Um, and really on paper had nothing going for him. So highly recommend you, if you want some motivation or just encouragement, honestly, definitely, you know, look that up or just where he comes from his story. Cause it's insane. Um, but yeah, like I said, I, I, you know, I do have family that, you know, again, and I think that played into how it's not like mentally we're so far gone when it came to money and understanding. Right. But of course, inevitably, when you're so used to like just traveling on a dime and, you know, 
school shopping. That's an example. Like every single summer you just get, you go to the store, a bunch of new clothes. It's like, this is normal. This feels normal. Things just become like, oh, this is probably what everybody does. It's a new year. Mm-hmm. You get new clothes. Um, going out to eat and not having to worry about money. Like there's, we're at a nice steakhouse and there's seven kids, nine people, including my parents. Like never once was there like, okay, let's maybe not get this. It was like, you can get whatever you want. And, um, that's also just how my dad was. And so, yeah. Um, I would say when I got married, especially it's not, I've never, been like oh man I just want more money like why don't we have money it it's it's more so just the understanding and like the humbling of myself to be like okay we can't money does not grow on trees we cannot go wherever we want we do have to budget especially with Seth you know um getting married like you know you had school loans that I I yeah. did not you none of us did and Um, things like that, that really, it just opened my eyes to like, oh, wow, you have school loans. You're like working in the summers to help pay for school. You, um, are paying for every meal that you have. Like my parents sent us an allowance for a while while we were in college and I did not have a job in college and all this kind of stuff. So I think there were just certain things that eventually we had to learn. I think all of us literally um, hit a point either in our marriages or just in life in general where we just got slapped in the face with like reality. And, Mm. um, it's a good thing. And I think all of us were and are thankful for it, but definitely was like a shift, um, that needed to happen and that we continue. I at least continue to have to like frame my mind to understand that, you know, and I think I've come a long way, but yeah. yeah. No, you have. That's good. (laughs) Thank you. Um, kind of want to, you know, going back to your parents and their upbringings Mm -hmm. and, you know, for those of you that don't know, Jackie's dad is black, her mom is white Mm -hmm. and especially coming up through the seventies and eighties, having an interracial marriage in that time was pretty significant. Yeah. Can you, um, maybe just shed some light on their relationship and the racial tensions and some of the issues that that brought. And then mm-hmm. even as you were growing up, what was that like for you? Yeah. Um, well, I commend them both because it was an absolutely, in- I mean, literally segregation had just <laughs> ended and they in- at Baylor, obviously that's in Waco, Texas, for those of you who don't know, which is the South. And so, um, yeah, they were definitely going against the grain dating and being interested in each other. But my, my dad always said he saw her and I think one of his friends said like, oh, you'll never get her. Cause she, you know, basically like doesn't sleep around or something. And he was like, oh, that's my wife, you know, <laughs> like, okay, that's, that's who I want. And so he literally, um, basically like pursued her from that moment, um, which I think is really cute and special and he didn't care. You know, they both just didn't care. I th- I think they cared, but it was like not, it, they didn't care because they were opposite colors. They cared because it was like, man, this is going to be pretty tough. So there were, um, I mean, my mom lost friends. I'm sure my dad lost friends, um, coaches, you know, he was obviously playing football at the time. Football coaches heavily advised him against dating her, um, just a white woman. Their parents didn't even meet until their wedding day. Like they were both very against it. Um, and then uh, my, I, it, it was just not a, it was a definitely a frowned upon thing. Like pastors even would be like, no, this isn't good. You, you probably shouldn't do this. So thankfully they knew the word and they knew the Lord and mm-hmm. um, knew that that, I mean, it was just something that they were going to to defy the odds and do anyway. Um, and I'm literally so thankful they did. Obviously, I wouldn't be here if they didn't. And so um, they definitely endured a lot of judgment. Obviously, having mixed kids, like, there was just a lot there. 
Um, so yeah, it was tough. It was rough yeah. for them. Yeah. Um, you know, with fame, there's a lot of really cool things and presumptuously good things that come with it, but mm-hmm. there's also, you know, argu- arguably equally as many negatives that come with it as well. Yeah. Can you kind of go into some of the the negatives of growing up with a famous dad and yeah. for you personally and also for the your family. Yeah. I would say um there were yeah, there were definitely a few negatives I would say. And, and not necessarily even negatives, but like things Well, no, that were yeah, difficult. just the downsides yeah. maybe. Yeah. <clears throat> um yeah, I would say the the biggest one that comes to mind was just your life just being out there, not mine per se. Um, and not even accurately, like just seeing my dad be like ripped apart, shredded, just especially when he was coaching, um, that felt really impossible. And I, I carried a lot of anger. I know all my siblings did in their own little ways. Um, but that was just rough. I, you know, being, in middle school and high school, number one, having an opportunity to move around every single year. Like it sounded fun, you know, um, like, Oh, new room, new bed, new, whatever, new house. But, uh, the flip side of that was like, literally to this day, there's really no, um, I didn't really grow up with like these solid friendships. Like Mm -hmm. all of us pretty much had each other. And I would say, You know, obviously we have friends, but to this day, um, I know a lot of my siblings who don't really have many friends outside of our family um, and we're just not those people that were even had the opportunity to take with us like these lifelong friends who really knew us and all that. It was just I think we kind of kept everyone at an arm's length because it was like, well, I could be gone next year. So this is great. But um, so moving a lot. But I would say the biggest thing is going to school and just your life being, you know, out there for everyone to see. And then, you know, kids, your friends, not really knowing people's motivation, especially boys. Um, But teachers, you know, just that was kind of their like point of conversation with you was like, oh, hey, saw last night's game. You know, you should have told your dad to do this or you should, you know, or just trying to get insight on like who he really is and what's on, you know, what's really going on like um, with the team or or just friends kind of get on your nerves. I literally used to like get in so many fights with boys and girls. Just I, again, I was super angry. I think it was just like, it was so frustrating to um, hear all these comments or to, um, you know, my dad, you know, that's my dad. Like, and to you, he's a football coach to me. Like, that's my dad, and you're talking. Like, what do you think I'm going to do? You're sitting here talking so poorly about him, or I'm seeing things online, or, like, your dad sucks. I can't believe, you know, whatever, in person or online. And so that was just really um, tolling. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah, you never – people wanted gear. People wanted tickets. People – you just kind of felt like a tool. It was just like, you know – what can I get from you? And if not, you don't really matter. So that was probably the most difficult part about it. No. Um, and then obviously just my parents' expectations, like we just, there was just an, a higher standard that they expected us to live at um, that we kind of had to just because they didn't want one of us in the newspaper, you know, so probably that yeah yeah well all right last question here before we wrap this up um and that is how has your relationship with your dad shaped you Mm. i would definitely say um i he is such an unbelievable man like apart from anything he's ever done i've always said like more than anything i am so humbled and um, just beyond thankful, truly, 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 um, to be his daughter 
strictly because of the man that he is and how much he invested in us time wise and just his wisdom. Like he always, always, always had time for us that I just will never forget no matter what. And I think as kids, sometimes we were like, he's probably busy. Like the whole world wants him. You know what I mean? The phone calls, zoom calls, everything. It was just like, he was always, always gone, always so busy. Um, and we were just like, you've got a whole, you know, got to prepare for Sunday. So like, dad's off limits but he made sure to I mean if we called him if we knocked on his door um he literally there I don't ever 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 remember a time where he he would be in the middle of a phone call and be like hold on can I call you back real quick like just if I had you know if I was sad or if I had something I wanted to ask him or anything like that he made time for us a hundred percent um he was never too busy and there were seven of us so um, he just did an incredible job of putting us and my mom first, no matter what, you know, during training camp, the families would sleep at the hotels. He never did. He always drove home and they would be done. You know, he'd get home at 1 p.m., 1 a.m. sometimes. Um, but he really made us a priority. And I'm so much more proud of him for who he is as a man and as a person, as a dad and a husband than I like his all of his accolades like professionally don't even come close to like Mm -hmm. how proud I am of him for just the man of character that he is like the man I've, I, his character, his integrity, his honesty, his love, his, you know, grace, like who he is as a person just far outweighs like anything he's ever done. Um, so I just think, I mean, how it's shaped me. I, I just, I don't know who I would be if it weren't for, you know, the blessing and the honor of being raised by a dad like him and a mom, you know, my, my, my mom was an essential part of my dad. (laughs) There is no dad without my mom because, um, she's really super woman and he will tell you the same, like all of us know he couldn't do it without her. So yeah. I don't know. He's no, just a wonderful man. No, that's great. I think I think about even our daughters, you know, yeah. Kennedy and Evan and just like that reminder that it's not what you do in life, but it's how you love those around you. 100%. And that leaves the biggest impact in life. Yeah. Hearing you say that, "Oh, I don't I don't think or remember my dad for all these accolades or yeah. all these awards that he's won or achieved it's like no i the things that i remember the most are the moments that i had with him yeah. and the times like yeah that he invested in me yeah so, and even, how he reacted to things you know how he responded to people how he responded to me if i broke something you know it was like yeah that kind of stuff really stood out yeah no that's a great reminder for me as a dad and hopefully anyone else listening so yeah. Thank you for sharing a little bit more. And I hope you all can kind of just get that much closer to knowing Jackie and who she is and just yeah. learning a little bit more about her life and our life, our yeah. lives, our life. <laughs> So. Yes, thank you for listening, and thank you, my interviewee, uh-huh. for asking all these questions. And yes, this was this was nice. It was nice, kind of to debrief about all this kind of stuff. I feel like I don't get to really talk about it. And so good. It's nice to talk about it. Yeah. You did a great job. Thank you. Baby. All right. That's all we have for today. Again, I am Seth and I'm Jackie and this is never TMI and we are signing off. Peace out. <laughs>